The statement made by Burkina Faso's president in a February interview is significant because it signals his solid determination to reforming the country and breaking away from historical ties that have hampered its progress. The president's statements indicate a defined vision and strategic planning guiding his activities since taking office, defying notions of military leadership, and demonstrating a planned approach to administration. Maybe everything we've done has surprised you, hasn't it? Don't worry, more changes are on the way that may surprise you, the president says, emphasizing his commitment to executing ambitious reforms and projects that challenge the status quo. This statement demonstrates a sense of purpose and confidence in the direction of Burkina Faso under his leadership, removing any worries about his ability to govern efficiently. Furthermore, the president's resolve to break every tie that has kept us in slavery represents a dedication to sovereignty and self-determination, rejecting all forms of external control or dominance. This firm approach is consistent with the country's history of resistance to colonialism and exploitation, emphasizing the value of autonomy and empowerment for Burkina Faso and its people. The president's declaration also addresses assumptions and prejudices about military commanders, specifically their competency and aptitude for government. The president argues his competency and capability as a leader by claiming that all acts performed under his leadership were meticulously planned and carried out, regardless of his military background. Furthermore, the president's statement of surprise the West, notably France, by introducing a new currency indicates a dramatic shift in Burkina Faso's economic policy and international relations. This daring action indicates a readiness to express economic independence and challenge existing arrangements that may be interpreted as limiting Burkina Faso's autonomy. Captain Traoré's plan to break all ties that have kept Burkina Faso and other African nations in what he calls slavery includes a significant focus on challenging the CFA franc, the currency used by 14 African countries and long regarded as a symbol of France's economic and political dominance. The CFA franc, founded in 1954 for France's African colonies, has allowed France to keep significant control over its former colonies' economies and monetary policy. France has had great control over the CFA franc, allowing it to affect monetary policy, currency valuation, and the money supply in Francophone Africa from Paris. This centralized control has hindered African nations' ability to govern their economies independently and make sovereign monetary policy decisions. Furthermore, France has maintained control over a sizable amount of Francophone Africa's money reserves, mandating 100% deposit in French banks at first, then 70%, and now 50%. As a result, Francophone African governments have been unable to create or issue their own currency, have limited autonomy in monetary policy decisions without French permission, and are required to keep a portion of their money reserves in French institutions. This arrangement has fostered a system of economic reliance and hindered African nations' capacity to pursue autonomous economic development plans. Captain Traoré's view that cutting links with the CFA franc is necessary for economic independence reflects a broader yearning among African nations to establish sovereignty and recover control over their economic destinies. Burkina Faso hopes to break free from colonial heritage by contesting the CFA franc's domination and arguing for greater autonomy in monetary policy and economic decision-making. This will pave the way for a more egalitarian and self-determined future. He went on to explain that from a purely practical economic standpoint, the CFA is not a beneficial currency or system for its user states, because the long-term analysis of the GDP of countries using the CFA franc reveals that since their independence, none of these countries have recorded as much development as they should have if the CFA franc was truly for their benefit. The highest income per capita any of these nations had experienced was in the 1970s. Sambo further explained that the fact that the CFA franc is pegged to the euro is even detrimental to the economies of Francophone countries because their exports are priced and traded in US dollars. As a result, their predominantly commodity-based products become uncompetitive on the worldwide market. This approach limits Francophone Africa's economic freedom by trapping them in a neo-colonial model that promotes foreign firms over domestic companies. 
Mali attempted to break free from this economic and financial tether by establishing his own currency, the Malian franc, one year after gaining independence in 1962. However, due to internal disagreements and France's steadfast desire not to allow any of its former colonies to achieve complete independence, the Malian franc was abandoned and Mali was incorporated into the CFA zone in 1984. Since then, no other francophone country has tried to break free from these economic constraints. However, in 2019, Ivorian President Alassane Ouattara and his French counterpart, President Macron, issued a press statement announcing the end of the CFA as it had previously existed. According to them, the Central Bank of West African states is no longer compelled to deposit half of its foreign exchange reserves with the French government. The currency's name, CFA Franc, will be changed to ECO, and France will no longer have control over its management. Well, it's 2024, and the CFA Franc hasn't been changed to ECO, therefore we may assume that France continues to handle the currency. In other words, nothing has happened. This is why Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger have agreed to pool their resources and establish a common currency for their confederation. In September 2023, these three governments formed a military alliance to pool their resources and combat the increasing menace of Islamic rebel groups that have plagued their country for years. However, it did not end there. Ibrahim Traoré went on to say that they had resolved to expand the partnership beyond a military alliance to a full-fledged political, economic, and monetary union. He also stated that planning were underway to form a confederation to combat any external danger. Four months later, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger announced their withdrawal from the regional bloc, ICAWAS, which they claimed had deviated from the Founding Fathers' original ideals and had become a puppet organization for the West, as well as a threat to their own members. According to Ibrahim Traal Ray, the next natural step after departing from the Union to achieve complete sovereignty for these countries is to establish their own currency, free of France's influence. Niger's military junta, General Tani, corroborated this when he stated days later that currency is a symbol of sovereignty. The AES member states are in the process of regaining complete sovereignty. It is no longer acceptable for our countries to remain France's cash cows. In November 2023, the finance ministers of each of these countries convened to examine the possibility of forming a monetary union, implying that the notion of creating a new currency has been considered. Everyone is watching with bated breath to see what the Chunta's next move will be in relation to the issue of new money. Because, in fact, creating a new currency entails considerably more than simply printing new banknotes. They would have to dismantle decades-old banking systems and replace them with a better one. Ternothian, an expert on monetary policy and West African state unions, believes that three critical aspects must be considered before a multilateral currency can be launched and maintained successfully. First, macroeconomics and fiscal policy must be carefully coordinated, which means Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali will need to closely coordinate their economic and budgetary policies in order to maintain currency value stability and remove trade imbalances. This will help to maintain economic actors' confidence while also promoting regional development. Growth. Second, strong monetary management institutions, such as a common central bank, must be established to manage the currency. This central bank must have the authority to implement an independent and stable monetary policy, which will help to sustain the currency's value while also addressing cyclical instability. Third, the three countries must develop a unified single market, which is an extremely important step. The single market will ensure the free flow of goods, services, capital, and labor, thereby accelerating economic growth and strengthening regional collaboration. The existing framework established by the West African Economic and Monetary Union gives significant benefits in this regard. Finally, systems for monitoring and addressing crises should be established. Common reserve funds and currency exchange agreements, for example, could help mitigate external and internal shocks to the new currency. Currency swaps, in which two parties exchange sums in two distinct currencies for a specified period of time at a predetermined rate, can be used to manage exchange rate risks and facilitate cross-border finance. While the globe awaits the next move by the military hunters, 
we can't help but admire their foresight in deciding to create a new currency. There may be drawbacks, as some analysts have noted, but the benefits greatly outweigh the risks. First, introducing a new currency would give these countries entire independence. Second, establishing a larger monetary zone will promote increased trade integration and better resource allocation. It would also increase the country's flexibility when dealing with external partners. Third, by entering a new monetary union, these three nations might gain major benefits in terms of trade integration, independence from external partners, decreased transaction costs, and investor attractiveness. Ibrahim Traoré has made a brave step, which his counterpart, as well as the rest of Africa, welcomes. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.